What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In this episode, we're gonna be staking up our pepper plants today. And so I hope you guys are going to enjoy this because uh, it's something that I need to get done. And I figured I've got the camera and it's a beautiful day in the garden today. So why not bring you guys along? Plus it is brought up quite a bit in the comment section. Uh, Luke, do you stake up your pepper plants? And should I be staking up mine? And if so, how should I do it? So, you know, it's nothing crazy. It's something that it's definitely optional when it comes to growing peppers. I know lots of people grow peppers without staking them at all, and that's totally their, their choice. And that might be the choice that you decide to go with as well. You know that if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, I don't tell you what you have to do. I usually say what I do, and if what I do works, uh, you know, is working for me and it agrees with you, then give it a shot. Um, but there's never like a guaranteed way to, uh, to grow a garden and peppers are no different. Um, I've grown them before using those cheap little tomato cages that don't work for tomatoes, but are like the ideal pepper height. I've used those in the past and those work great. I just don't have any with me. Um, I have used uh, the broken stakes. So like uh, these, the tomato stakes that break, cause we stake up our tomatoes eight feet tall. I'll take the, the stakes that kind of get all rotted at the end and I'll just kind of take the non-rotted end and I'll cut off, you know, maybe four to six feet or so and uh, cut it on a 45 degree angle so it's easy to pound in the ground. And I've used those, I've repurposed those uh, with you know success as well. Um, I have even grown peppers without staking them. Depending on the season and depending on how big the plants get, some don't even really need it. And so when it comes to pepper plants, certain varieties are a little more prone to falling over than others. Heavy fruiting varieties like bell peppers or banana peppers, those are way more likely to kind of fall over and kind of, uh, kind of crawl along the ground uh, rather than smaller peppers like you know, chili peppers or some of your more like kind of tinier spicy chili peppers, things like that. Those are a lot lighter weight so they don't bring down the plant as much because that's generally why the plant starts kind of tipping over is because as the season progresses, it gets heavier and that weight kind of just drags the plant down. Um, so. When it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to staking, I've done them all. And what I got this year was something new, but it's gonna work exactly the same. I got these little wooden stakes. Now these wooden stakes are known as survey stakes. And they're only, I don't quite know, uh, maybe three feet-ish, three feet-ish in length. And I thought these would work great. Now these are a one by one, so they're exactly one inch by one inch, and they're tapered. And surveyors will use these. Uh, they will pound these in the ground and then they will tie a rope to them to check how level the ground is. Um, they'll see how steep uh, like a, like a drop-off is, like how many, what the grade is of the land. So, you know, one inch per foot, two inches per foot, stuff like that. Like what's the drop of the land? And so they use these to measure that. Um, contractors will also use them when pouring cement. They will, um, you know, they'll tie this in, same exact thing. They'll pound this in the ground tie a line just to check for like, to make sure that the cement is level. Um, lots of contractors will use these. I got these at our local hardware store. These were, I got them in a big pack, so I don't know what these were per stake, but they were actually really fair. And these were the great, these were a great height for my peppers. Um, but coming in close, let's check out these pepper plants. They look great by the way, um, absolutely amazing. Some of the pepper plants are yielding incredibly. Some are just coming into production. So I'm excited, check it out. All right, oh my gosh, this is nuts. So this is a cubanelle, and as you can see, the peppers are definitely dragging this plant down. This is a banana pepper here, and as you can tell, there's almost more peppers than plant. Absolutely amazing yields on this banana pepper. I also have here, I have a, uh, this is a, uh, this is a grilling pepper, an Italian grilling pepper, giant Marconi is the uh, the type and these are absolutely massive like look at this look oops well, that was ready to be harvested <laughs> look at that holy smokes it's giant um so um yeah so i mean this this uh this giant marconi is giant it's actually growing in amongst another uh another sweet banana pepper here and as you can tell it's really loaded down so those are looking great. We have over here a variegated fish pepper. 
Um, this was something that I wanted to try. I've seen a lot of people growing it. It's nothing really super special, but it's cool because the peppers are also kind of variegated. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they do have kind of a, a variegation to them, which is neat. So just kind of a neat heirloom pepper that I thought I'd try growing. And um, here's one that's ripe, sweet, beautiful. Ooh, very pretty. You, I don't know if you can see kind of the, the golden streaks in amongst the, the red there, but very, very pretty. Um, but yeah, this fish pepper is doing really well. And then um, we have another fish pepper over there, as you can see, the variegated leaves. And then we have here, this is, um, this is a cubanelle. Or not cubanelle, sorry, an ancho, my apologies. An ancho pepper. And then this, this is a orange blaze bell pepper. Um, I picked a couple of these up from our local greenhouse just because I had some, <laughs> we had some losses. Um, we had some losses from an, a really late frost. So I just planted a few that had, uh, that were not looking the best. But these are looking great, super loaded down. We have over here a, uh, one of our favorite plants to ever grow from seed. I love growing this. This is called Pasea Bahio, and it is a drying chili, and we use this for making like Mexican, Mexican dishes. Absolutely amazing. This thing is just loaded down so much. This plant's giant, so really good benefit. And then we also have here, we have, we have a eggplant, which I'm going to stake this up as well, but it's loaded down with some beautiful eggplants. This variety is called Kermit. This is a new one that we're trying here on the channel just to see how it does. And then we have another variety of eggplant here, a Rosa Bianca. Now this one here is ready to harvest. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, so I'm just gonna stake these up by kind of pulling the plant gently to kind of self right it. And then I'm going to find the kind of the, the base of the plant and slowly poke the sticks in. Now, I wanna be careful not to go too close to the base. One big mistake that uh, a lot of gardeners make, and I've certainly made this mistake as well, is that uh, if you go too close to the base, what you can do is you can, you can basically sever right through the root system. So I'm going about, I'd say maybe like three to four inches away from the base of the plant. And I'm basically just, uh, I'm staking it on the side that is leaning. So if it's leaning to the left, I stake on the left side of the plant. So the plant is not completely upright, but it's basically leaning up against the stake. And then as the plant grows, it's going to realize, okay, I'm no longer, uh, I'm no longer leaning. I have to grow straight. So all of this foliage is going to curve up and it's basically going to self right itself right against the post. So just make sure that you don't go too close to the plant. Make sure that you don't uh, sever any of those roots because that's definitely going to cause some stress and root damage. Um, and then also just make sure that you don't push the plant too much because you can, you can basically snap off the plant right at the base by trying to, you know, right it to a 90 degree angle. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to come in here and do that with all of these. Some of these plants are so, so low to the ground that I don't even think a steak's really going to matter. These, uh, these uh, shishito peppers are basically the lowest growing plant I've ever grown. They're essentially just a, <laughs> a ground crawling pepper plant because they're maybe only a foot tall. It's crazy, but I'll still pop a stake in just, just for the sake of staking them. Another question that people ask a lot is, Luke, do you ever get tomato hornworms on your peppers? And to be honest, I don't. I might have only ever had tomato hornworms on my pepper plants maybe once that I can recall. I, I just don't get them that often. Now on my tomato plants, yes, but not on my pepper plants. Let me know if you've ever had them 
on your pepper plants down in the comments box. I'd be really curious. It's a question we get asked a lot because they do, I mean, they do go after uh, nightshade family crops, but tomatoes are usually the thing that they go for in my uh, experience. All right, and the final thing I'm doing here is just harvesting some peppers. So I'm getting quite a good haul here and uh, I did not bring out a basket. So pretty soon my shirt's gonna be the basket. But uh, <laughs> isn't that just the fun of gardening is uh, using, your, using your garden shirt as a, uh, as a basket. I guess that'll have to work for now. But these things are absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to take these into the kitchen and eat them up. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something new. And I really do hope that you're enjoying this channel as much as I am producing this content. Uh, a viewer asked me the other day if I ever find YouTube and making YouTube videos to be stressful. And I told him, no, it's the most fun thing I've ever done. The only thing I ever find stressful is deciding which video I'm going to upload because there's multiple days where I'll film two or three videos when I'm out in the garden. And uh, <laughs> it's always the stressful thing of, which one do I think they're gonna like more? I had fun filming them all, but which one do I think they're gonna enjoy the most? And um, I kind of, uh, I kind of, you know, stress out about that. But that's uh, that's not really stress. That's that's very enjoyable. So I'm just thrilled that you guys enjoyed these videos. I'm so grateful that you uh, have tuned in for today's episode, and I really do hope that, uh, like I said, you've learned something new and are enjoying. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, this is Luke from the Mi Gardener Channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye. Look at that haul, you guys. Beautiful.